In this video, we are going to talk about data science jobs in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. We are going to talk about salary ranges for different data science jobs in Amsterdam, depending on your position and seniority level, the benefits you get when working in the Netherlands, the Dutch working culture, salary increases, networking, promotion, and all that matters. And I got a little Dutch souvenir for you. If you don't know what it is, stay until the end of this video. My search of the salaries is based on both publicly available information that you can find on Glassdoor, Indeed, or LinkedIn for a particular role, as well as my own experience, the offers that I got from companies, and a bit discussion with friends who work in the same field about their experience as well. The salary ranges that we'll be talking about is before applying payroll tax. I'll put a link in the description for you if you want to check out the tax calculation for a certain salary. We do pay quite a bit of tax over here, so it's good to check it out. When you're still in university and working towards completing your bachelor or master study, you might do an internship or maybe a master thesis with a company. It's really hard to say how much you can get compensated. I think in recent years, most data science internships are paid internships, even though companies are not obliged to pay for their interns. Paid internships usually have the salary ranging between 500 and 1500 euros on a full-time basis. But keep in mind, Mind that most internships are part-time internship due to your schoolwork, so if you work only two or three days a week, you would of course earn half of this amount. Internship is usually a great step to an official entry-level data science job, so let's move straight to the first data science role, data analyst. An entry-level data analyst often makes around 30,000 to 55,000 euros per year as a base salary, with a median salary of 42,000. If you're living somewhere like in the US, US, you're probably thinking, what? That's pretty low. Yeah, you do often get less in Europe than in the US for the same job, but taking into account other benefits like vacation days and healthcare costs, which I'll talk about later in this video, I think it's actually not bad. 30,000 to 55,000 is a very large range, and I was quite surprised that salaries seem to differ a lot per company, industry, sector, and also depends on your prior experience. In general, if you're applying for an entry level data analyst job at a commercial company, here in Amsterdam, straight out of your master's or internship, I think it's reasonable to aim for a base salary of around 35 to 40,000 per year. But it's always good to do some extra research on the starting salary in your specific company and industry. Senior data analysts with two to five years of experience can expect to earn an extra 10 to 20,000 euros per year compared to an entry level position. So you might expect to earn up to 70,000 euros per year or even more more, especially if you have the right combination of skills and domain knowledge. Moving on to the business analyst position. Business analysts in general earn roughly the same salary as data analysts, maybe slightly higher on average, from 32 to 60,000 euros per year. The median annual salary of a business analyst in Amsterdam is around 45,000 euros. I do realize the trend that the bigger company it is, the higher salary for business analysts it usually offers. Business analysts are the people who help directly with the decision making of a business, so bigger companies probably want to put more importance on this role. Moving on next to the data science consultant position, my current salary as a data science consultant, in which I do a little bit of everything around data science, is around 61,000 euros per year. And this is after in total five years of working. In my first job, I earned like 29,000 euros per year as a junior data analyst, even though it's not much, I remember I felt so happy. I felt so rich I didn't have to check the price tag of everything at the supermarket like I did when I was a student. So I guess money matters a lot, but to a certain point, it's probably not going to make you any happier. Now let's talk about the sexiest job of the 21st century, data scientist. Let's first talk about the junior data scientist job. Junior data scientist or just data scientist salaries range somewhere between 33 to 82,000 euros per year, with a median salary of 47,000 euros. This insanely large salary range is probably due to the fact that data scientist is being used for a lot of different roles out there because there's a lack of a clear definition of what it means to be a data scientist. So a lot of data scientist positions I've seen are more similar to data analyst or even data engineer position. However, those companies that really know what they are looking for usually offer really good salaries. Senior data scientists 
or data science team leads are probably the richest ones, with 61 to 99,000 euros as a base salary, with a median salary of 73,000 euros. Large companies here like Booking.com or Shell pay more than 100,000 euros for senior data scientists, especially for those who have a PhD or master's in computer science, econometrics, mathematics, statistics, and an extensive working experience in data science. To put it in perspective, 100,000 euros salary in the Netherlands is a lot if you think about the median salary of the whole working population here is just roughly 35,000 euros per year. However, you might also realize that data science salaries in the Netherlands don't tend to be that high. If compared to those in the UK, well, London specifically and San Francisco where data scientists are paid much higher. But I think salary is often the less important part of working in the Netherlands. One of the best thing about working here is the work-life balance and it comes with a lot of benefits. Well, it sounds like I'm adver advertising for the Netherlands. Everyone who is employed in the Netherlands gets a minimum of 20 days of paid vacation. Most employers actually offer 25 or more vacation days. On top of the minimum 20 vacation days, every employee has the right to a holiday allowance of at least 8% of their yearly salary. So every year in May, you get some extra cash on top of your monthly salary to make the most of your summer holidays or whatever you decide to spend on. It's also not uncommon that overtime hours are also paid out as vacation days. So if you work overtime, you can write down that overtime hours and use it in the future as holidays. Next to vacation leave, there's also sick leave because everyone gets sick once in a while. If you get sick for just a few days though, you don't need to tell your employer what you have. But if someone gets sick for an extended period of time due to disability or burnout, they are entitled to 70% of their income for the next two years. If you become a parent, you of course get a parental leave. I think right now the maternal leave is 14 to 16 weeks in total. So summing up the time off before and after giving birth, from what I remember, new fathers also get about two full weeks of paternity leave at full wage. And they can also take additional five weeks at 70% of their daily wage. In the Netherlands, your employer also contributes partly to your social insurance. This social insurance ensures a basic level of well-being when someone hits retirement age or they become chronically ill and can't work. For health insurance though, you have to pay for your own health insurance. It's not expensive here but it's required by law that everyone has health insurance so every year you might need to pay between a thousand to fifteen hundred euros for your own health insurance depending on how much your insurance covers. You might also get other benefits such as a wellness allowance. At my company, there's a well-being budget of 1,000 euros per year that you can spend on personal development courses, yoga, sport classes, or almost anything that might help with your physical and mental health. So we have talked about data science salaries before. How about bonus? Bonus is often determined by your performance and seniority level, and also by how well the company has been doing in the past year. If you're a data analyst or data scientist in the financial sector like banks or asset management companies, you are likely to get higher bonus. But I think in general, you can expect something between 5 to 10% of your annual salary if you're doing okay. Another benefit that most companies offer is the learning budget that you can use for going to events, trainings, conferences, or even postgraduate degrees. Many of my colleagues got sponsored to study part-time for professional qualification or postgraduate degree. My second degree in computer science is also paid 100% by my company, which I also talked about in one of my previous videos. I mentioned a bit earlier about the work-life balance here in the Netherlands. Even if you work for a corporate, you are not expected to work overtime a lot. At least it is not the norm. Before joining PwC here, I thought at a big four like this, I would probably have to make long hours every day. And you know, I've read horrible stories about people who got fainted or heart attacks from working too much. But luckily, it's not the case. I feel like people appreciate working smarter than working harder. At my office, most people would leave by 5 or 6 p.m. and then you find yourself sitting by yourself in the darkness because the, all the lights would automatically turn off and you feel like an idiot. <laughs> As a result of the pandemic though, I've heard that people work longer hours at home for many different reasons and thus more easily get a burnout, but I think it's not part of the working culture and I don't think that it has changed. Moving on to the Dutch personality and working culture in general. The Dutch are famous for being very very blunt 
and direct. They have absolutely no problem with saying no and no problem with giving you some constructive feedback, which to some culture could be considered quite harsh if you're not used to it. It's not because your colleagues are mean to you or anything. It's just because they value being honest, being efficient, and not wasting each other's time beating around the bush. This can be a challenge for someone who moved from a more reserved culture. For me personally, I'm an Asian heritage. I was born and raised in Vietnam, lived there for a good 23 years of my life before moving here. And yes, that's why you hear me speak English with an amazing Vietnamese mixed with Dutch accents. <laughs> When it comes to communication and networking, you probably don't have to worry too much about the language barrier because the Dutch speak one of the best English in the world, except for the accent. So the question is, do you really need to be able to speak Dutch at work? Yes and no. Some companies might be very international. They have mostly international business partners and employees, especially that you work in data science and everything is most likely in English anyway. But many companies do use Dutch quite a lot, both in casual and professional context. In the team that I'm in at PLUC at the moment, most of my colleagues are Dutch and our projects are also often with Dutch clients. So naturally, I have to learn to speak Dutch as well. But to be honest, it's not a very hard language to learn, especially if you've learned the foreign language before. However, no matter what kind of company you are working for, if you decide to work in the Netherlands in long term, I would really encourage you to learn Dutch because it helps you a lot regarding the networking aspect and also helps you feel more flexible, more connected and included at work. For example, when you are going out to eat lunch with your Dutch colleagues and everyone bursts out laughing at a joke, except you. It's kind of awkward. And if you're applying for a job here in the Netherlands, the employers would be very impressed if you can speak some Dutch and they truly appreciate that. So it makes your application a bit stronger as an expat. And that's a little tip that got me a job as well, twice. In Amsterdam, there are a lot of events, conferences and meetups in data science. And there are also a lot of hackathons you can join and it's also a very good way of networking. In the Netherlands, most people use LinkedIn. So it's quite convenient to connect with people and take advantage of their connections as well. Once you get a job and start working, the next question that comes up is the salary raise. Annual salary increase at the companies I've worked with is usually between 3 to 5%. It's clearly not a lot. If you're looking for a big promotion and a big salary raise, the best way is probably to apply for another job at another company that offers higher salary. Generally, after two to three years in data science, you can raise your price quite a bit because two to three years in data science is such a long time the field just develops so rapidly. Some of my friends use the higher salary offers that they got from other companies to negotiate with their current employers, hoping that they would agree to offer an even higher salary and benefit to be able to have you. It's a smart trick and works in many cases. It might get you a 30% or even 50% raise immediately. But after you do the negotiation and then still decide to stay at the company after all, it kind of sucks. I don't know about you, but personally, I don't think is a fun situation to be in. So if you decide to go for it, do think it through and have some backup plans. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you this little thing. It's a wooden shoe or a Dutch clock. It's an important part of the Dutch culture. If you came here in medieval time and worked in a farm, because obviously we didn't have computers and Excel sheets yet to play with, you might be wearing these too. They're not so practical though, not sure if you can even run in those shoes, but I hope the information in this video is practical and useful for you and that you know now more about what to expect when working in data science in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands in general. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you dislike it, please feel free to hit it twice. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye bye!